Marcus Hayes Fight Hub TV here at the RGBA That's with Mr. Right. Robert Garcia. Robert, what's going on, man? How you doing? Not much, man. A little tired. We had a lot of work today, man. Training Virgil Ortiz, Jose Ramirez, and uh, Lindolfo Delgado still in the gym. Uh, Oscar Duarte and the rest of our guys, man. I'm tired. I'm tired right now. PBC. Uh, Amazon Prime, the inaugural pay-per-view event for right. them. Uh, absolute barn burner. We started off uh, with the first fight, the Martinez fight. Correct. Move on, Sergey Bohochek yeah. uh, takes down uh, a very game uh, Brian Mendoza. Mendoza. Brian Mendoza, Bohochek, big fight. Talk to us about the way things went down and how Bohochek showed himself. Yeah, that's why. That's why you know. That's why I'm. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, it was a. A card where that it was worth it, you know, it was worth it. I think I think PBC when when they first announced uh, their 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 first big card, kind of people were questioning. You know, it doesn't seem like because 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 uh, of uh, Tim Su not being a big name here in the states, everybody was actually expecting maybe Tank to be the first, you know, on on you know on, on this new platform that that uh, PBC has, but. Uh, you know, shows get, how deep the lineup is. Yeah, they, they they did a great job with with all four fights. I think I think Mendoza put up a good fight, but this guy was just better. Had a better team. I think uh, his trainers did a great job, great game plan, and and that's what shows. You know, where where you have a, a good team that that that's behind you and uh, and cares for you and puts up a good game plan. In the next fight, big time fight, we saw Isak Pitbull Cruz. Uh, in a great barn burner fight, pillar to post, beating Roley Romero. Uh, a lot of people thought that Pitbull Cruz was going to lose. Uh, Pitbull Cruz showed his medal at 140 pounds, wrestling away the WBA portion of the belts. What did you think about his performance? No, with the no new disrespect championship? to the main event because Fundora, great person and and two great fighters, but two versus Roley was was probably the main event. Should have been the main event. I think the whole crowd was there for 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 that fight it was uh it was uh you know the the fans from what i understand i wasn't there but everybody was cheering for pitbull i think it was he stole the night uh pitbull it's gonna be hard for to to get beat uh i'm not saying he beats everybody but he'll give trouble to everybody his style is one of those styles that's gonna give anybody trouble you could have the best talented fighter the 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 hardest puncher you could have the the best boxer you know whatever it is people's gonna give you trouble i'm not saying he beats everybody because you know 140 135 is full of talent but uh and let's talk about that but coach. they won't be but but they, but they won't be easy fights you know i'm telling you and let's talk about the talent uh the other champions at 140 pounds lots of talent in and around the division but we'll just stick to the belt holders for time's sake uh Tiafimo Lopez is there. Exactly. Sabrina Matias exactly. is there. Uh, of course, you've got Pitbull Cruz there, and then you've got Tiafimo Lopez with another version of Devin the title. Haney. And Devin, and so, exactly. I'm sorry, and Devin, Devin Haney there. Yeah. Devin the Dream Haney there, who a lot of people say is the number one guy at 140 mm. pounds. I, I think so too. You know, I think I think at 140 right now, uh, Pitbull, even 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 to Devin Haney, I don't think Devin Haney will have an easy fight against Pitbull. But I think he could control with his jab, with his good boxing skills, his reach, and and pull off uh, maybe a decision. I don't think I don't think I don't think he could he could hurt or, or knock out a uh, pit bull. But I think he could pull off a decision. I think with the rest of the guys, I think I think I, I could probably say they're fifty fifty fights. I think uh, Matias, even though he's got tremendous power, you know, pit bull that. Tr has tremendous chin you know he'll take a good punch and 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 he's just so aggressive throws so many punches from different angles that that is not good you know I, I i'd say it's those are 50 fight 50 50 fights even against tofimo tofimo's i love tofimo he's great skills uh i, I still think uh pit boobers tofimo be a great fight. i think that's probably the best one i would want to see better better than anybody else well a lot of people at ringside uh we're talking about sabriel matias yeah well, versus pitbull cruz just a mexico puerto rico yeah, showdown great. back to the old days the 90s the exactly. 80s the 70s and beyond mm -hmm. uh how does that match up come together and if they did who would you see on top of that one I see both ending up in the hospital, man. Definitely, it's, a scary, <laughs> it's almost a scary yes, fight. It's a scary fight. Uh, I think both could end up in the hospital. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ray Martinez fight. Both fighters ended up in the hospital because yes. they just took a beating and they had to get checked up. But yeah, I think I think it's one of the fights where where both, you know, because because Matias, you know, 
very dangerous guy, man. That power that he's got, you know, little by little, even if he loses, you're going to end up, even if even if you beat him, you're still going to end up in the hospital. Definitely. Because that's how dangerous that guy is. And people also, you know, he's dangerous. He keeps coming. Maybe he doesn't have the same power that, that Matias has, but he just keeps coming, keeps coming. And he's chopping you down, you know, round by round, round by round until, you, until you're out. Uh, he doesn't have that, that, that one punch power, but he does continue landing and landing and breaking you down little by little. Uh, same thing with Matias. So, you know, it's, it's a scary fight for both. And you know, coach, and I'm so glad to be talking to you about that because these are insights that the fans don't get of, of how deeply you care for these guys. I see that I'm at the RGBA, the ranch here, um, with, and there's so much care that goes into this. How do you prepare a fighter for a fight like we just talked about, where you know for a fact, where everybody, there's there's that air in the room, the elephant in the room is, this is going to be hard, if not career altering. altering. What do you, how do you prepare for a bout honestly, like that? Honestly, I'll probably try to stay away from those type of fights. But, you know, there is, it is a business. Sometimes those those fights are are the biggest paydays for you. The biggest, the big, and I can't stop my fighters from from uh, from getting the biggest paydays out there, or else I'm not doing my job. Also, but I would I would have to focus on on, on coming up with a game, get good game plan. The the bottom line, it just it won't be easy. You know, those guys are 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 very difficult. Anybody at 135 or 140 will have trouble against people, and even including my fighters. You know, you know, I have fighters at 35 and 40 that they won't have a, an easy fight against people. Uh, Matias at 140 is probably the most the scariest guy at 140. It's tough. You know, I know I have fighters that that would go in there and with them but yeah we would have to be very careful and, and fight smart it's not it, it won't be easy it won't be easy but uh but yeah you know it is a business and he is a champion sometimes we have to take those risks speaking of those type of fights the main event was that type of fight for for tim zoo for both guys uh both guys i know pretty well you know pretty well uh the beating that was handed out by both guys absolute bloodbath blood all over the 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 first four rows the media section uh the direct media section around the apron of the ring Correct. uh the middle of the ring the the draft kings logo changed uh, the pbc logo the T, the gtb logo changed everything covered in blood tim zoo horrible about three and a half inch cut over his uh the top of his hairline and presumably a broken nose for sebastian mm -hmm. fundora uh talk to us about that bout you know what, it was, it was, us as fans and people as fans love those type of fights, but they are, they do hurt a lot, you know, when it, you know, for the opponents, because they are beatings they're taking. But uh, me as a, as a trainer, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let my fighter go through that, especially when it was a, an accidental uh, elbow. It was, uh, you know, that cut was huge, and it was, and it's not like it was small and it got bigger later in the rounds. It was huge since the beginning. So the best thing for for me to to have done, I would stop the fight and go to no contest, and then do it again later later in the year. You know, I'm not going to risk my fighter to fight for ten rounds with with so much blood gushing out. You know, where uh, fighters could lose a lot of uh, energy and and uh, you know. People, people die from losing blood. So that was for that was another half an hour of of nonstop bleeding. Scary when Tell you me, think scary. about it. I would have stopped it and go to a no contest, and then renegotiate and do it all do it all over again. I talked to Tim Zhu after the fight, and quite frankly, he told me. I said, "Well, what was it like bleeding the way that you did?" And he said, "Man." I couldn't believe how much blood I was losing. I, I just couldn't believe it. Um, one, have to, one would have to think that that would alter the way that an individual was fighting. Uh, do you think it's a different fight without the cut? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And 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 I like Fundo, I'm, and I'm I'm happy for him because he's he's a champion now. He's local here in Southern California. He's been very respectful to me, his dad, his sister, both champions. You know, I've, I'm very happy for him. I was actually <clears throat> cheering for him to win. But uh, but it did make a big difference. Obviously, you know, it's, I'm, I don't think I'm the only one that could say that. The whole boxing world says the same thing. It did make a big, big difference. You know, I, I know fighters like Tim Su would have never won 
his opponent, I mean his trainers to stop the fight, but that's a trainer's job to to protect his fighter. And if you're already going in there for 10 more rounds with a very bad cut, a disadvantage that's gonna affect you, stop the fight and go to no contest and just, you know, do it again in the future. Julio Cesar Martinez coming up in a win against his good opponent. Fight. Good fight, Probably Solid one fight of the best fights of the yeah, year. Yeah. Opponent goes down two times, hops back up. Just an absolute war yeah. to finish no, that, that, or to start the night no, on. That, that was a great fight. Uh, Martinez is always in those type of fights. You know, he lo loves to fight. He loves getting Entertaining fight. He also has tremendous power, so that's why he's able to drop his opponents the way he does. And that that probably the, those knockdowns is probably what you know what gave him the the win. But like uh, the, the kid was game. You know, his opponent was game. Came came to become champion. You know what? You know came short. But he came to become champion, so it was it was one of the, you know the whole card, man. You know it was it was it's a great card. It was it was unbelievable. Every, you know we, we, you know I know you're gonna bring up the rest of the fights, but the whole card was awesome. You know then there was the fights in LA too, where Surdo Ramirez made history. Yeah, sure though. First uh, ever Mexican to become cruiserweight champion. You know maybe not not an exciting performance like we're talking about. You know the fights in in Vegas or the fights in in in, in Arizona with with Valdez. But he won. He made history. That's huge for for Mexican boxing. Definitely is. Uh, on the and back to Zerto Ramirez. Zerto Ramirez at one seventy five with the loss that he took looked like he might have been out of it. Another guy stayed true to the game, moves up in a weight class where he's more comfortable, comes out and is a champion again, and is one of the most classy guys in exactly. boxing. If you know Zerto Ramirez no, exactly. at all, exactly. I've I've known this guy for many years, and he's always always shown nothing but class. And 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 it's true. Look, he loses. Everybody counts him out. Everybody, you know, maybe even included ourselves. We thought oh, maybe he doesn't want to fight anymore. He doesn't have the fire. But he came back strong. His team, I got to give a lot of credit to his team, uh, his trainers. They did a great job. And uh, and look, now they're now now they're, now now he's on top of the world. You know, the first ever Mexican champion at cruiserweight. So that's awesome. Sky's the limit exactly. for Zerto, definitely. He might even jump up to super heavyweight. You never know. Huge win. For Oscar Valdez exactly. coming back, beating Liam Wilson, uh, knocking out William, Liam Wilson. What do you think about the main event? Great win, you know, great performance by Valdez, you know, short, tremendous heart, uh, determination. You know, the, Valdez is one of those guys that, uh, that you don't need a game plan for him. You know, obviously you could come up with a good game plan to beat him, but himself is just to be in great shape. He's got tremendous heart. He steals the show, but just the way he the way he reacts to landing one punch and then goes after his opponents with 15, 20 punches uh, nonstop. He's not afraid of getting tired. He's not afraid of getting hit. That 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 fighter is a true Mexican warrior. That's what a, a true Mexican warrior is all about. I'm you know very happy for him. What do you think happens next for him? He wins the uh, the interim belt. Uh, what do you what do you think he goes from here? Well, I, th I think I think they'll push him up to the to the regular uh, WBO champion because uh, it looks like uh, Vaquero Navarrete is moving up, and and if he wins the title, more likely he'll stay at, at lightweight. So 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 Valdez will be the 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 only champion there. I think uh, I think there's a lot of options for him. You know, uh, there was there was word about him maybe even fighting Loma. That's a possibility. Uh, there was word also that uh, Bernardo Lopez, he was there, might move up from featherweight to to uh, junior lightweight to fight uh, Valdez. That would be a great be a fight great between fight. two Mexican fighters. You know, one from Sonora, one from Mexicali. It would be a, an awesome, an awesome fight. So I think he's got a lot of options. You know, uh, Top Rank also promotes uh, Foster. Who is also a champion? So you know, I think, Shocking. I think, I think, I think it's, I think there's so many, so many, so many opportunities. Lots of good options, and just yeah. like that, uh, talk to us about how a win can revive a guy's career, just like Oscar Valdez, if you stay true to the game. Exactly. Look, that guy's, you know, after his his loss to Navarrete, he never gave up, kept coming, even though a lot of people might have already counted him out, might have said, you know, he's done, he's looking towards the end of his career. Look, he's champ, champion again, and. Uh, and a solid guy, you know. It's not like he he they picked a, 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 an easy opponent. That guy was solid. The guy he beat was strong, big, and solid guy. And and he was able. He to, had Navarrete out on his own. Exactly. So so 
So, so that was a great win for for Oscar. I think uh, I think Oscar Oscar proved that that he still belongs up there with with the top fighters in the world. You know, especially when it comes to to Mexican champions. Right now, Mexican Mexico has a a, a good role. Four four champions this weekend. Unbelievable. Big win there. Uh, another win. Top ranked car Sinisa Estrada yeah. becomes undisputed over Yoka Valle. Really, really, really good bout. Uh, Yoka sustained a cut. Looks like kind of had a struggle getting it together the whole fight, uh, but she fought valiantly. What do you think about how they? I think that was another one of you know one of the fights that you know I'm not I'm not a very huge uh, uh, woman fight uh, fan, uh, but I was excited about that fight. I, I've seen Estrada develop since the since she turned pro. She was a little girl in the amateurs, you know, but then turning pro with Golden Boy and and her her moving to top rank, just seeing her develop and grow. Uh, I was excited about the fight, plus uh, Yoka Valle, I've met her a couple of times, very friendly, very respectful. Uh, it was, it, it, before the fight, I knew that was gonna be a great fight, and it was. You know, I think I think they both deserve a, a rematch, a, a, a way bigger payday. Uh, the fight was very close. Some people are saying uh, Valle won, others say Estrada won, so it was, it, it was that close to where it could have gone either way. So I think a rematch would be the best thing for both of them. They don't got anywhere else to go. You know, I don't think there's there's one boxing person. I don't think you could mention another top fighter in that division that could be a big fight for 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 any of them. For either one of them, yeah. I don't think they could mention, that was one of five. I don't think they could mention a 108 pounder that is a big fight for them, you know, where they could move up in weight. I think between them is where they should, you know, that's a big fight a rematch and maybe even a third fight in the future. Even after the fight, uh, Coach Mama, uh, AKA, Glo well, Coach Gloria, AKA Mama, fired up on the microphone. You can tell that she's looking to run the fight back. She, they kind sure. of got their own little uh, fired up. It's just a lot of storylines. They, should. they, should. they need, need another fight. Look, if they, don't, if, if they fight other people, none of the, you know, the fights won't be interesting. You know, Estrada could go out and defend her titles against somebody else and, and, and it's not gonna be much. People are gonna, not gonna be very interested. And same thing with uh, Valle. She could go back home to Costa Rica and fight over there and she does pull out a lot of people, but still doesn't have the same meaning. I think them fighting each other is gonna be the fight that uh, the fans, the people, the promoters uh, want to, are gonna wanna put together. And it'll be a main event and it'll be uh, for a lot more money for both of them. So I think it's, it's, it's just the best thing for them to do, fight each other again.